video. And here's audio in three, two, one. Welcome to the Jeremiah Whoop, Hold it. Show. I'm sorry. Something did not kick in. Three, two, <laughs> one. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show. Something didn't kick in, huh, Dr. D? It That's what did you now. Just said, uh, it's now it's, rolling. It's kicking in now. I feel like it's uh, a caffeine. Uh, for me, <laughs> it's our special guest music, man. Uh, holy, holy, everything that's great with music. It yeah. So it's so great. You're going to be hearing it throughout this show. So uh, I do want to warn you a little bit, though. Um, <laughs> yes. Turn, turn, don't turn down your speakers, turn your turn speakers up. up. And if you can listen to this show with headphones, even better. The music's amazing. Um, I wanted to talk right, right off the top before we get to our special guest, Dr. D, I just wanted to tell you uh, yes. first, happy St. Patrick's Day. Hi, thank you so much, As sir. Irish boy. It's yes, good you, to have you here. You, I brought you a three leaf clover. I'm sorry, right, I couldn't find any four leaf clovers. They're hard to come by. <laughs> That's why they're lucky. I'll, I'll keep searching. Okay. Uh, and also we wanted to, uh, you know, you, you've been here at the station for 16 years. So I wanted to have longest happy anniversary. Thank you. Longest gig I have ever had in my career of 43 years. Uh, I wanted to also mention you got a little, what, what do we bring you over there? Uh, Courtesy of, by the way, Franny Higgins, Les Carroll, Big Lou uh, of the Sports Lounge, let's, Lewis let's, Jones. Let's not put it on the floor. Um, yeah. Are you going to show it on the camera I'm there? I'm going to try. Don't don't let it fall out on your lap. Let me, uh, let me get over here. <laughs> so while you're doing that, we got a cake from the Little Things Bakery in Santa Barbara, and it's all about the little things in life. And Leah is the <laughs> owner there. I don't think you um, can see the writing. It's it just says congratulations. So when I pick it up, years. though, yeah, congratulations, sixteen years. Yeah. When I pick it up, though, uh, it said congratulations on six years, and I was laughing, and I said, I said, oh, don't worry about it. It, he probably goofed off for the 10 years, <laughs> <laughs> the 10 years that we dropped from the cake. Uh, so it's probably only been six years of real work, right? Les? Yeah, probably. <laughs> if you combine it all together. Okay. Check out uh, the Little Things Bakery on Instagram at the Little Things Bakery SB mm -hmm. and say hello to Leah. She's the owner. It's one of the cleanest. You know, I'm in the hospitality business oh, yeah. by uh, day trade. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of the cleanest little bakers restaurants that I've seen in a long time. I was super, super impressed and organized. So that's hard to do with a bakery. All right, let's get to our special guest, Ren Ren. I don't know if even she likes cake, but Ren Ren, we'll send you a, uh, send we'll you send a slice, you a slice <laughs> wherever you're at. <laughs> She's our very special guest today. She's a metal core, alt metal singer and songwriter, Ren Ren. Um, I don't know what it is, but you listen to her music and you almost want to announce her like, Rin Rin. <laughs> <laughs> do people do that to you a lot, Rin Rin? Do they, um, do they get into this deep like metal voice? <laughs> uh, not really. Like when it comes to my name, they kind of just ask me like, Rin Rin, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's not really like a name like metal bands would pick. You know what I mean? Like Rin yeah. Rin kind of sounds like some Japanese pop kind of kind of thing. So I always tell them like, oh, it's actually just like the second half of my name twice. Because my real name is spelled as Q-A-R-I-N. Ah. So I said, oh, so yeah. This is your stage name. You know what yeah. it makes me want to do? I'm just going to do it once now and get it out of the way. Otherwise, I'm going to think about it the whole show. I want it when I hear see your name. I want to go rin 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 rin. rin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like the race cars. Yeah, <laughs> oh that's God. the little kid in me that, that never grew up. All right, that's what, the one and only time I'll do that to you. I apologize, uh, <laughs> and I apologize to all your fans. <laughs> Don't send me any hate mail. Okay, let's uh, let me do a proper interjection here. Um, so, Doctor D, early morning, mm -hmm. six forty-two a.m. At a late night at the Larry Vigon Art Gallery show, followed by Gibson, ton Gibson Tonics and Tapas at La Quito. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally stumble out of bed today. I make it to the coffee maker and I can't find my favorite mug. <laughs> 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 okay, great. You know what that's like. I'm mm. like, oh my God, don't tell me this today. I impatiently wait for it to brew. And I want to know, I want to ask this question out there. I want to, I want to pose it to the coffee makers and the toaster makers out there in the world. Can you make both of those things happen a little quicker? The toaster goes for like five minutes now and the, and the coffee maker takes forever to brew. Um, I'm looking for a combo unit. 
that has a toaster and a coffee maker together. I mean, if they can make a microwave do things in 25 seconds, why can't they make my coffee brew that quickly and my uh, toast pop up? That exactly. Okay, but I, I, I'm going off track. Um, so, so I get a cup of steaming coffee. I slip on my, my new Apple Max headphones. I love those things. And I click my music. Prepping for the interview today. It's hellfire. And can you bleep me out right now? Or just... I can do this. Bleep. Yes. Just give me a nice bleep. There goes my coffee. <laughs> but that's okay. I don't even need it. There is hellfire in my ears and I'm awake, Dr. D. As you will soon hear for yourself, my special guest uh, musician, she defies an adequate description. Her music's powerful. It's energy defined. Energy defined. Her music. She has the energy of the sun, the pull of the moon. And everything in between is pulled into her gravity, including my brain this morning through my ears. But I love it. It's just what I needed. And so do you. She's Ren Ren. And she's the next big rock star, Dr. D. Mark my words right now. They say that overnight success takes 10 years, but metal and core alt metal singer and songwriter Ren Ren burst fully formed onto the scene in the summer of 2020 with the release of her debut single, The Game. The 20-year-old Rin Rin uh, from Perth, and Perth is Australia, yes? Yeah. Yes. Showing an early aptitude for guitar, she joined her father's cover band at age 13. And then the emo rock band Love Me Natalie before striding out with her own material, playing shows with her super... Is it Kuyas? Kuyas, yeah, yeah, it's like a Tagalog for older brothers. Older brothers, oh, yeah, I like that. Okay. And then Kr, help me with the other one. Argue, Argulas. Yeah. James Judges and Eddie Bissett. Seek the Truth followed in January 2021 and was in the top ten AMRAP Metro charts. AM rap Metro charts and the triple J unearth metal chart. Both singles brought international attention to Ren Ren. And by summer 2021, she had been snapped up by the management company Riverman with Paradigm as her European agent. It's funny, uh, Ren Ren Paradigm, uh, endeavor and endeavor in Los Angeles. They were my agents long, long time ago. Wow. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, I haven't seen Paradigm for a while. Oh, it's such a small world, isn't it? Is it is a small world. <laughs> I just have no talent, so I still I don't have them anymore. <laughs> the EP was released on September 3rd with the track Shadows, chosen for the Spotify editorial playlist rock out with 76,000 followers plus. With an undeniable sense of the direction she wants her band to have, Ren Ren is ready to play her powerful brand of heavy music all over the world. Check this out, Dr. Her band is debuting their EU performance at the highly anticipated Rock the City Festival. They're supporting Alice Cooper and Uriah Heep in Vanta and Kupio, Finland on 10th and 11th of June 2022. Get your tickets. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give it out right now, actually, uh, in case you can multitask and do two things. Go to rockinthecity.fi. K U O P I O, uh, and get your tickets or rockinthecity.fi at Vanta, V A N T A A. Um, that's going to be a great show. Alice Cooper opening up for Alice Cooper. Congratulations, uh, Ren Ren. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then they're going to have a couple uh shows after that they will announce throughout UK and the e EU. Just wanted to mention real quick that Ren Ren is represented by Destroy All Lines for Australia and New Zealand. All right. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, you really have some fantastic, hard-hitting rock and roll, heavy metal, however you want to describe it. I just describe it as good and a lot of fun. Um, I really, really enjoy it. How how are you enjoying where you're at right now, Ren Ren? Um. And to be honest, like everything kind of seems so un unreal for me. Like two years ago today, I was probably like, I don't know, in my room being all depressed and edgy about the whole coronavirus because 
me and my band kind of like um, split um, before the whole virus started. So I was kind of like writing in angst and bitterness. Why did and you I split? Sorry? Before you move on, why did you guys split the band? Why did the band split up? Um, I was in two bands, uh, actually, other than Love Me Natalie. I was in another band um, called Down Above Me. We didn't release anything, but there was this one song that I really liked and I wanted to release with them. Mm -hmm. It was um, The Game before it became the game if you know what i mean mm -hmm. like before you took like, it and made it your own yeah so i kind of like yeah i wrote that and i showed it to my dad and i was like hey dad this is kind of cool i would like to record this you know and i was like and he was like yeah sounds cool so yeah i did that first step recorded a music video because i was peer pressured too but <laughs> <laughs> no regrets um because i started actually enjoying doing that and i wrote more songs and the more songs i wrote the further i went so like now getting to play with alice cooper oh my god Bull from my valentine over to the other side of the world i have never been anywhere near europe or even america i've only been in like around asia i know asian as hell but like i've yeah, so everything is like. I mean, and you're if you're opening for Alice Cooper, I mean, there's going to be 10,000, 20,000 fans. I don't, you know, the, he the guy's been performing yeah. forever. I and, grew up. I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, which is where he's from. I have known this. I have known of this guy forever. Have you ever been to a concert? No, I, I have not, and I <gasps> don't know that. <laughs> we. Yeah, didn't he? I mean, when Odyssey Osborne like bit off that head of the bat, or so so they say. Yeah. Didn't he used to do stuff like that on stage, like just really shock you? And I, I, well, Good questions. Uh, yeah, uh, let me go. So you, peer pressure. You say you uh, gave into peer pressure. Um, do you give into peer pressure easily and often? <laughs> no. No, but like. What What do you mean peer pressure? They They just said you're that good. You've got to do this, Ren Ren. You can do it on your own. Yeah, kind of along the lines of that, more like, um, yo, don't just let this song sit in the dust, you know, make a music video. I know a friend kind of thing. So I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> why not? Who's your friend? <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, I wanted to back up a little bit because to, to what you said in the beginning, and I'm glad you you brought it up because I was going to try to take you there anyway and and, uh, and and flesh out my theory through listening to your music. But you talked about two years ago, um, you know, you were sitting in your your bedroom and you were bummed out and and performing. You know, you at that point you didn't know when you would be able to perform again, right? I mean, all musicians were going through that depression of like. I can't, I have this, I have this gift or I have this thing I have to do. I have, to, I am a performer. I need to get it out. I need, it's, it's how I breathe. It's how I exist and I can't do it. And I need an audience and I can't get my audience. I can't, and I don't know when I'll have, see them again. I don't know when I'll be in front of them again. Um, was it a little bit like that for you? And just that, that heavy weight of, of that understanding, that dark cloud coming down, like I'm not, I don't know when I can perform in front of anybody again with a band. Um, I mean, the thing is with me is before Rin Rin, I never actually sing in the band or like if I was doing like those school performances at school, I was just always a guitarist. Mm -hmm. I never really took up singing until I wrote the game and I had no one else to sing for me because yeah what did you how did that feel uh, how you know but look at what comes out of uh tragedy sometimes and and um and out of necessity look at you you're you are the singer now you are Rin Rin you are uh you're going to be a huge rock star I'll guarantee it and and I know many people that feel this way about you uh in the industry out there and, and the people out on the radio world especially who will play this and and uh you know get you out there um 
in front of listeners look what happened you you did were you really nervous to sing yes like my first <laughs> performance as a singer because I'm like just naturally a shy person I would probably say I have like mild social anxiety like I would always like overthink what I'm gonna say I'll either like when you meet me in person I'm either like you're gonna think I hate you or you're gonna think I'm a crackhead <laughs> you know <laughs> sorry but like I just so the first time I um performed live singing was like the most the most like intense experience for me but it was probably kind of like kind of like an awakening like all my life I've never sang in front of people but now I am and probably starting Rin Rin was one of the most like probably the best one of the best decisions I've made in my life because like not only I get to do what I love but I'm kind of pushing past like my boundaries and what I I'm comfortable at doing mm -hmm. so yeah um are you so you say maybe a little socially anxiety how do you feel right now are you good on the show with us yeah it's all friends here right yeah we're, all, we're <laughs> friends like... it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean i would never get that from your music and i and i know that you that you've mentioned that you're shy and i'm gonna, I'm gonna we're gonna come back to that i, I do want to talk about that um but you've got a lot to say, not only musically, but lyrically. How many instruments do you play? Is it guitar? Uh, I guess just guitar. guitar. Uh, and yeah. then vocals, yeah. So that's an instrument. Um, but your lyrics, I thought, were, were so powerful. And, you know, Dr. D, you know, teenage angst and rock and roll and rock music or metal music. It's yeah. not, it's, that's kind of where it's born right mm -hmm. where it was born 50 years ago yeah um but what i've noticed too it was the the teenage musicians and and even into the 20s is their their boldness in expressing mm -hmm. those deep feelings into their music Whereas it used to be like in the 70s and 80s, it was the bubblegum music kind of, that's the phrase they yeah. would use. No real meaning to it, no real, no real texture, that kind of stuff. But today it's like, hey, I already know that our stories are all different, but we all feel the same emotions. And this is what I went through and why I felt this. Mm -hmm. I love that. And and Ren Ren really is a great writer, as you you've heard probably as you put the soundtrack together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the and then again the teenage angst or or even just angst in life from in general, whoever, yeah. love or depression or someone's wronged you and how you're dealing with that or how you feel about yourself. Um, but Ren Ren, you offer something beyond that, and you offer a glimpse into what it must be like growing up in this mm -hmm. world present day and so that's where i really became intrigued by your you and your music and your your lyrics um first i want to ask you who is ren ren how would you describe yourself describe myself as an artist and a person um i guess to me ren ren is like of course, not me, me. Rin Rin's a different person. If you had to step Rin out Rin, and I look at you and who are you? Yes, Rin Rin is bold. Rin Rin sings about whatever she wants to sing about, mental illness, depression, um, freedom of expression. She's not afraid of what others will think of her or her music. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of... Um, metal fans might look at Rin Rin and she's not one of those hardcore kind of screamo kind of people right but like I write metal mm -hmm. uh, can I'm I dovetail girl. Off? I'd like to dovetail off of that you talk about freedom of expression How, what is your feeling about 
your responsibility as a songwriter and performer in terms of what you put out there. I, I couldn't agree with you more about freedom of expression, but how about your personal, your responsibility for what you put out there? And do you feel responsible? Is that, yeah. is that should that be part of it? Is it part of it? Should, what I should be responsible. You feel responsible as a writer, as a songwriter. It could because you've got you, you're building hundreds of thousands of fans, and uh, I mean it's like know, they, and they 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 listen to you, yeah. and and they're maybe they're feeling they've got mental. Um, um, yeah. It's like that one song by the rap or they're that, depressed yeah, a, that rap point. group that says uh, uh, go bleep the police. You know, it's like, really? You know, no, that's an extreme. Like that. that's an ex no, 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 no. I know that. But I'm just saying that's an extreme. That is a very extreme. But uh, mm -hmm. do you see your responsibility as, hey, I need to talk about this stuff because it's important? Yeah, like, like um like my one of my songs the black sheep i sing about coping with mental illness the feelings of loneliness and especially like what other people will think of you like i know a lot of friends and who go through that kind of thing and that kind of song is kind of like a song of comfort like telling the listeners like you're not alone like, I know what it's like. People know what it's like. You know, I'm, yeah. That's the kind of message I want to spread my songs. And the kind of responsibility I hold is like, I don't want people to feel alone. Because I know that there are young girls who listen to me, like my nieces, little sisters, and like, like if ever they ever feel like that when they're older that they know me, they know my songs, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're helping a lot of people that you don't even know. I hope I am. <laughs> um, and the Black Sheep, you know, you mentioned, I actually took a bunch of um, my questions from, from that song and you touched on them, you know, being on your own. Um, it's not a phase. Life gets you down almost every day. I want to kind of go through some of those things because I, I think you're what makes a great rock star or what makes a great music artist uh, is someone that captures the time such like such as Billie Eilish who she captured that moment in time really well for her age in her age group uh, but it resonated with a lot of people yeah I believe and and she became a, a global superstar because of a lot, a lot of because of her lyrics and the way she put her music to it but the lyrics people it, it resonated with people and it and I don't think she set out to say, just like I don't think you set out to say, let me comment on this topic. Uh, or let me write a song about it. I think you're writing from the heart. And that's what I feel when I hear your music. You're writing from your own experience. And that's what makes it so powerful. Because it's not, you're just taking hot topics and putting them in lyrics. You, you're, you can feel it's Rin Rin. And, and either the experiences you're going through, the kids, the, the, you know, your, your, your friends around you. We do have to take a real quick break and we're going to go to break right now with a song from Ren Ren, uh, the one we've, we've actually been referring to a little bit, Black Sheep. Do you want to, do you want to comment on the song now or, or as far as who plays on it and, and, and the inspiration, Ren Ren, or, or because I want to dig into the song a little bit when we get back. Well, when I first wrote the song, I actually got inspired after watching The Joker back in 2019. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw how lonely he was and how, like, everyone thought he was kind of, like, crazy. I mean, he is crazy. But, like, <laughs> nobody cares to understand that, you know. The Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. He, did, he was good in yeah. there. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we're going to talk more about that song when we come back. Black Sheep. Here it is. Rin Rin. Okay. Awesome. And and our special guest is in the waiting room. Okay. So let me uh, let me come back and we'll talk about Hellfire and then I'll, I'll just I'll do this when I'm ready to let him. In. You got it. Okay. You got it. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. Our very special guest today is Rin Rin. Your ears are 
probably ringing in a good way. <laughs> your 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 bell just got rung <laughs> with hellfire. That was an that's an awesome song. I love that. That's why I woke up this morning too and spilled my coffee all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good. Good wake up. The caffeine does not uh, assimilate. It's supposed to that go. Way. Yeah. It's not. You spill it on your shirt, on your skin. It doesn't get in this quickly. Does not it could help. be that way. But I didn't need it after that. I put the coffee away. I just listen to Hellfire and the rest of this uh, Rin Rin's music. Tell us a little bit about Hellfire, Rin Rin. So I wrote Hellfire after a tragic breakup. And basically, the song is kind of like a I hate you message. I don't need you anymore kind of thing. Because in the lyrics, I mean, in the whole story of Hellfire, right, there's this character, Rin Rin Rocket. She fights monsters and robots, and she comes across this villain, Meg. And yeah, they have some history. They had some beef with each other, and she like whoops his ass. She burns him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of like a um, referring to... Um, <laughs> all the things Sorry. you wanted to do nothing you would have really wanted to do this ex-boyfriend yeah. right? <laughs> things i want to do but i can't because laws yeah. <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> anyway be, um be singing behind your jail cell <laughs> yeah i don't want, i don't want to go to jail i'm no. too young you know too young too, you young. too much to yeah. sing about That's right. i have my life to live so there you go yeah it's an awesome song uh, do you now, when you come up with a great song like that, that's it, it. You couldn't write that song unless you'd been through a bad breakup. And everybody who's been through a bad breakup knows, I hate you. <laughs> you know, and you, you <laughs> think of all these things and all the revenge or whatever it happens to be. Maybe not for a long time, but but everybody has some thoughts, right? You, you're. It, it's hard. Breakups are hard. If you didn't have that breakup, though, there would there be a hellfire? Do you do you look at sometimes you go. Okay, that really sucked, but I came out with something even better. And look at me, I'm opening up for Alice Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, sometimes your tragedies are a blessing. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> so, yeah, if it wasn't for that guy, well, was, yeah. Uh, okay, let's bring our special guest in here. We got a surprise for you, Rin Rin. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was introduced to you and to your music by this gentleman that's joining us right now. Oh. He's a huge DJ uh, globally and uh, especially in Tokyo. And it's Mike in Tokyo. Oh, hey. Good morning, hey. Mike in Tokyo. <laughs> Good Hello, morning. Tokyo. You're here with Rick. Hi, Rick. Rick. Nice to meet you. Oh, you, you guys not met face to face? <laughs> By the way, I, I emailed Mike at one, it's one thirty in the morning. It's not, not anymore. It's like four thirty, maybe. Right. But I emailed yeah. Mike. I'm like, Hey, you want to jump in and join us and, and uh, kind of co-host this with me? And, and uh, he said, yes, but it's one thirty. <laughs> <laughs> so good morning, Mike. Good morning. You know, what wakes you up really well. Ren Ren's music. That's what I found out this morning. Oh, Definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> well, I wanted to, did you, would you like to ask Ren Ren a question or, or do you need to wake up a little bit more? <laughs> well, so no. Did you guys talk about uh, Rain Rain's going to play the same stage with Alice Cooper? Oh, yeah. We were talking about that. And so, I, so, yeah. You have a story about that, yes? No, uh, no, Rain Rain. So, um, Jeremiah and I and uh, you know everybody we want to go and to the concert and we want to be backstage and <laughs> you're going to get us our all areas passes right yeah, yeah. it's rates don't we were recording this don't forget <laughs> so, so, so you're going to get us all areas passes and we can eat snacks and drink beer and everything backstage right with the real yeah. rock and rollers we can say we're with yeah Redman. Yeah, just just don't tell anyone else. 
<laughs> or her plus three. That's oh, I'm sorry. You must have better better uh, people you want to invite than us. So we won't. I won't hold you to it. But but I would. That would be nice. I, if nothing else, I just want to go to the, the concert. We got to. When you come on the other side of the world, are you coming over to the United States? You have plans there for next year, um, maybe, or or probably still kind of seeing how things go. Currently, um, I'll just ask my dad real quick. <laughs> Do we have any plans going to the United States? By... That's the next plan after the Euro. Well, oh. uh, we'll catch up with you somewhere. I got to go and see Mike in Tokyo. So yeah. maybe we'll, yeah. we'll see you somewhere over there. Uh, you said that most of my lyrical, lyrical inspiration draws from years of being an angsty teenager. How do you think your parents would describe those years and describe you? Were you a, um, how would you describe, were you angsty and in your room a lot, <laughs> listening to loud music and how were you in those years and why? I mean, the way I see myself and the way my parents see me is probably different. To me, I'm probably this like cool edgy teen at the back of the classroom listening to my headphones like life is so painful <laughs> and dad and mom is probably over here thinking like ah she's just being a kid she's gonna yeah she's gonna get through this yeah she's and just like, yeah and you're like they just don't get me yeah i'm like oh they just they just don't <laughs> get me <laughs> well wait so rain rain what's so painful Kid problems. Don't you ever, I don't know, look back in your childhood and I don't know, you want to have a sleepover with your friends and your parents say no. So then you cry to your room and plan your runaway escape. Do you ever have moments like those? Mike? I did. No, when I was like, you know, eight, 18, I was just drinking every night with my friends. <laughs> 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 well, I, I think, uh, think about this, uh, Mike and, and Rin Rin, uh, that uh, what I love about your music is that you're offering um, a glimpse into, like I said, what it must be to grow up these days. Look at what you guys are facing at your age, what you've gone through already. I mean, if teenage years or the, your, your growing up years, your growing years aren't hard enough with just a, the world has never been normal. But I don't think there's been as many things in my memory. I didn't have to deal with as many things as you guys do. T being out of away from your friends, you know, your faces covered for three years, uh, not able to perform music the way you love to do, um, to, to be with your other bandmates um, in, in an easy way. It's it, Everything's a lot harder, right? And then that isolation... You know, um, I, I think that you're really a powerful voice. Again, I'm saying this and through your music and speaking for so many people from my niece to to friends, children that are go, that have gone through what you're going through. It's a different world. And how do you deal with that? Writing music. Mm -hmm. But I mean, dealing with like problems of like isolation being away from people not being able to do things I love I kind of like in this time COVID's time like I kind of find a way around it like when COVID started yeah I was like hell depressed and lonely and I don't know what to do I can't hang out with my friends but now I kind of see it as an advantage in some way like I have more time to focus on myself or because people can't um oh sorry I forgot all I was gonna say cut that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, wait, um, and, but you were um because of COVID so many of your shows got canceled. And like, I don't know if you know this, Jeremiah, she had shows scheduled in Moscow and in the Ukraine, and they got canceled for uh, obvious reasons we don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. But is the Finland show still on, Rin Rin? Yeah, definitely the Finland show is still on, but like if ever something happens, I'll just swim there myself. <laughs> <laughs> 
they need your everybody needs you and your music right you now bet. it's 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 great so you told me in the beginning here that you're shy um and and i told you that does not come off when you listen to your music so my question for you is does music give you an alter ego or is that the real you or does um, it does it provide you like kind of an off-ramp for your everyday existence I mean, I kind of see Rin Rin as like an alter ego, kind of like a version of myself that I would rather be, mm -hmm. like more outgoing, more confident and more cool and rock star and stuff. Because the normal me in my everyday life is like nothing like the Rin Rin <laughs> I think of. <laughs> yeah. Don't you want to fake it for your fans right now? Just say, I'm always that tough. And it's, that hard. it's not that I'm faking it. It's just um, my whole life being shy, not really putting my voice out there. Like I can't even have class presentations like normally. But when I'm Rin Rin, I kind of made her in a way where I want how I want people to see me. Hmm. But how I am to people that know me in real life, they're never going to see me the way they will see Rin Rin. So it's not like that I'm faking it. It's just like. No, that's the wrong word. I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, but yeah it's just the it. way that. Yeah, I can. Well, uh, we got to take another real quick break. We're going to take it out with shadows here. Um, or Dr. D, am I, what, what break is this? This is shadows. Yes. Yes. I may have, mm -hmm. We came in with Hellfire. We're going out with mm -hmm. shadows. Uh -huh. uh, love that song. Uh, let me give you a, a Ren Ren social media handle. She's on Facebook at Ren Ren Music Official. Same on Instagram. It's spelled R I N R I N Music Official on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter at Ren Ren Music A U S. Ren Ren's debut EU tour will kick off on the 10th and 11th in June in Vanta and Kubio, Finland, open for Alice Cooper and the much awaited 2022 Rock the City Festival. Go to rockthecity.fi at Kupio, K-U-O-P-I-O and rockthecity.fi in Vanta. So it's uh, rockthecity.fi backslash Vanta, V-A-N-T-A-A. -A -A. Um, real quickly, I know you wanted to thank a few people and I think this is so... Uh, this says so much about you as an artist. Um, have so many artists on and, and they don't come with a list. Do you have that list in front of you or do you want me to do it for you, Ren Ren? You can do it. Okay, she wanted a special <laughs> mention. She wanted to especially mention Mike, Mike in Tokyo, who's joining us now. And Mike, when we come back, I'm gonna let you take take over a little bit and ask some questions. Um, Ren Ren would like to thank her team at Riverman, Dave McLean and Virginia Lee. At the Paradigm Agency, Jeff Meal and Claire Uding, if I've got those pronunciations correct, I hope I do. Uh, Destroy All Lines, Ash Hole, and Rin Rin Super Kuyas, uh, K.R. Argulelis, oh, James Judges, and Eddie Bissett. Do you want to fix that for me, Rin Rin? <laughs> K.R. Argulis, and James Judges, and Eddie Visit. Beautiful. Visit. We'll be right back. And here is Shadows. All right. Awesome. In three, two, one. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We are coming in with Ren Ren, Kent Suji. Kent Suji. Kintsugi. Mike's supposed to help me with my Oh, you want, do you want me to jump in here? Jump <laughs> so in, Mike. Jump in. Take over. I'm going to okay, work so, on my, my English, my Japanese, and everything else while you're taking over. <laughs> okay, so Rin Rin, um, I don't think Jeremiah and Dr. D admitted it, but because uh, well, we're old guys. And so it's really refreshing to see someone so young playing rock music you know everyone who's who's young no nowadays it seems is a dj you know we will be we be playing their little uh machines and things like that but you're doing a kind of music that you you called metalcore is that what it is metalcore metalcore new metal some hybrid 
Yeah. So do you do you see a, a shift in the audience from from you know young people instead of doing the clubbing scene to to starting to get excited about this kind of music and it's the future what is the future of rock and roll what tell us you're the future we, tell us. we are desperate <laughs> Please tell us we gotta know Please. i'm the future of rock and roll Ooh, <laughs> yeah i like that oh, oh, I, love it. I love it i am the future of rock and roll Rin -rin. <laughs> i love that quote really so so you're you're the you do you have any friends near your age that are doing rock and roll music and trying to break into this genre of, uh, of, of rock music. First of all, how dare you assume I have any friends? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. the, um, I do I have a friend. A <laughs> I think so. I do have a friend. Remember that band I mentioned to you earlier, the one that um, didn't work out that we wrote this game before the game happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only have like one other friend who's in like the gigging scene here in Perth. He's younger than me, and yeah, he's younger than That's you. About it. Like I, I don't want to ask your age. I don't want to ask your age, but have you have you graduated from high school? I studied. Actually, she's an international superstar now already. She's opening for Alice Cooper. She's yeah, I know, star. but I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> Jeremiah, what did you, what were you doing when you were 18 years old? I think it was like you drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to bands like Red Red. But there weren't uh, there weren't any there bands, weren't like any bands like, but it's interesting i love that question mike and uh, oh, yeah. we're making some jokes here but I, I actually want to hear the answer because you're the guy that you know that's gigging that's a little bit younger and you you guys are the future and do you call it rock and roll or do you uh, you've got you know the name the way you describe yourself is metal core alt metal singer and songwriter does do you like the term rock and roll is or is that the new term and is that where it's going um is it returning to this hard you know um it's hard rock it's metal but it's a little bit more than that i was thinking it's almost like a kaleidoscope i can almost see like there's beauty there's melodies in this hard sound and this raw sound and this also orchestral sound all these things you do with your guitar, there's all that and more. It's just beauty coming out in a really great package and message. It, what is the future? I want, I'd love you to answer Mike's question, I, if you know, you um, know, besides you. But where do you see it go? Because you, you, you guys probably stay up late and talk about this, right? I mean, for my music... Yeah, it does have a bit of orchestral stuff. Um, in Kintsugi, there was traditional Japanese instruments. There's like a bit of electronic elements and some of um, shadows and hellfire synths um, compared to like old rock and roll where it was just purely music. So for me, I guess, where rock is going. Um, uh, where are you going to take it? Um, or is that yet to be determined? <laughs> where am I going to take it? I kind of want to, for me, I want to modernize old elements and turn it new like orchestras traditional instruments and all that jazz and make it sound new sound fresh you know do you think you've accomplished that with what you've you've been putting out um i'm on the road too i believe i do i, do. I, I will answer, but i think you did you have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mike, Mike in Tokyo, back to you. It was so, so, Rin Rin, then, um, 
I had a really good question and now I've forgotten. See, when you get old, nothing good happens. Uh, but um, uh, who who are your inspirations? Like what bands do you like of old rock and roll or who who has inspired you? Well, growing up, um, I listened to a lot of Avril Lavigne and Flyleaf in the car because that's like all what my dad plays. So, and that's 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 probably all I listened to throughout primary school. And I kind of like Avril Lavigne is like my idol. She was like my goddess. Can I tell you an Avril Lavigne story of mine, real quick? Yeah. Did you love her? I was in London at the Saint uh, Saint I think Saint Thomas Hotel, and I get out of a black lorry and she gets out of a black lorry at the same time. We both get out. And we're both going into the into the door of the hotel, the oh. lobby, and I and that's when she had Skater Boy. It was like the biggest thing in the you know biggest oh thing in the world. God. And so I knew who she was, and I and we were walking side by side. We go through the door at the same time. We we pass the the guy at the desk. And I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm nervous because I'm like, I love her too. She's great. We get in a small elevator together. The music is like a club kind of a DJ sound in the elevator. It's just one of those boutique trendy hotels. We start going up. The guy switched the music to Skater Boy. <laughs> the elevator. And her and I are both opposite ends looking at each other. And we just start busting up laughing. Oh, wow. That's my Avril Lavigne story. Back to you. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I got an Avril Lavigne story. <laughs> so I was in Tokyo at this really big hotel. And I was having dinner with the president of TV Tokyo. And in the next table was Avril Lavigne. And... Um, we didn't say anything to her. <laughs> Did they play but, Skater um, Boy when she sat down? Yeah, no, no. I, I, yeah. I didn't say anything, but uh, people started talking, and then the, the president said hi to her and stuff like that. And I was like, I'm Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Red, Red, we got to get uh, Avril on the show. Will you interview her with me? If I can get her, if I can get her on, will you do the interview? Okay, we're gonna get um, it. Mike. Let's make that happen, Richard. Doctor D, you got it. You okay, got back it. to you. You were you were telling us something, and we, Mike and I, both had to. We had to name <laughs> stop a little bit. <laughs> I hate you guys. You're so lucky, man. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna interview her. So, anyway, do you, have you met her? You haven't met her. No. So she's your. You know, that's your idol. Do you still love her as much as you always have? Of course. Yeah. I have a poster of her in my um, guitar room. Mm. Mm. How many guitars do you have? I don't know. A few. A yeah. If you don't know, you have a lot. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, 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 go ahead. Sorry. How about um, your, uh, like your fan base? Your, your fans. Mm -hmm. You've only been playing i guess professionally not even for two years right i guess yeah you know, think about that jeremiah she hasn't even been playing for two years yeah. and she's going to open up for alice cooper it's incredible well you're hearing uh her music on the show and you've already heard a lot of it by now if you're if you've been with us the entire time and that is really incredible when you listen to the uh just the just the uh the experience you hear and in, in the you know in the playing and the, the mastery it sounds like you've been doing it for years um we're gonna go to break our last break right now and we're gonna take you to break with what are we taking you to break with like uh seek the truth love it we'll be right back all right stand okay on. this is our last we got three minutes guys um you want to what about talent talking about the tour your, um, your father sent me, I was intrigued by all your artwork, but we don't have enough time to go into that. I think your artwork is just incredible. Um, God, I wish we could mention it and talk about it, but we'll just have to hopefully have you come back if you don't mind when you release some new stuff. Uh, Do you want to talk about that? Let's talk about what's next. Are you good with that, Mike? And then talk about, you know, the tour again 
And then I'll give out at the very end, I'll give out all your information again. Well, I want to know. I want to know if like when she meets Alice Cooper, will she get down on her hands and knees and say, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> I probably will. Okay, we'll do that, do that on the break. If you want, or when we come back, we'll we come right back right now. Yes, we will. All right. And right you guys, now. you only have three minutes. I'm sorry, but I'll, okay. I'll step out. I'll let you do it. And then I'll come in and give out the information. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We've only got two more minutes, so I'm going to turn this back to our very special guest this hour and our special guest from Tokyo. You know him as Mike in Tokyo, uh, the Mike Rogers Show, number one in Japan and around the world uh, for many, many years. Welcome back, both of you. Uh, take it away, Mike. So, so Rain Rain, I, I, I got to know, you know, I, I'm a, the first concert I ever went to in my life was Alice Cooper. And I loved Alice Cooper. I was a geek in high school. So when I saw the movie, um, I can't even remember what the name of the movie was. But when you meet Alice Cooper, what are you going to do? Will you get on your hands and knees and, and bow to him and say, well, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Well, what are you going to do? I'm probably going to, yes, get down on my knees <laughs> Shine them shoes, take a swab, <laughs> take a sample of their sweat and ship it to you. Oh, thank you. I don't know about <laughs> shipping me the sweat, but whatever. He'll take it. Put it, put it in the test That's He'll take right. it. That's right. <laughs> I think you should show him how to play guitar. Yeah, I think you should. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, Ren Ren, what's next? You got some new music coming out. I hope you come back here and premiere it with us. Uh, tell us that, tell us what you can, what you're doing, what's coming up. So I'm in the midst of recording some new songs. I will be releasing three new songs throughout the rest of this year. Hmm. Yes. Plus a um, collaboration with the band Peaks from Italy. Mm -hmm. yes cool look forward to that will you bring it back to us the, the deb debut to premiere for you yeah thank you yeah for sure and, and and i know how you feel about this but I, i'd like to really think that uh, you're our friend <laughs> we'd like to be your friend i'd be very yes. special if you could be our neighbor <laughs> could you be <laughs> won't you please be our neighbor yeah Thank you. That's oh my nice. God, we have put her on the spot this show. I know. It's like, what, <laughs> let's get the addresses to her so she can send her backstage passes. Yes. Let's get the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the tube of sweat to Mike in Tokyo. I also want to do my hair just like you. Same color. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we got to say goodbye to Rin Rin. She's off to do wonderful things. We're going to premiere right now for the first time on our show. The game, the entire song, her first single that was out and when she releases some new things. In fact, I got something from her manager right before the show and it was too late to drop it in. But for the podcast listeners, I'm going to give you a little special treat. We're going to put a new single that is not out anywhere on the podcast version. So uh, wait. Uh, you yes. got a new single before me? I got a new me? single, Mike, before you. Sorry. <laughs> I scooped Mike and Tokyo. <laughs> All right. But you're on the show, Mike, so just pretend it's yours as well. That's okay. Right. It's oh, ours. Right. We're, we're sharing, sharing it. We're, we're sharing, sharing things. Mm -hmm. We share things here on the Jeremiah Show. <laughs> That's very we should probably share, share too much. Yes. Uh, okay. Ren Ren, uh, she's our special guest today, or was, and you can hear this entire interview on the radio everywhere. We're going to. Uh, send out all the promotions on that. She's a metalcore alt metal singer and song writer. Her social media, go follow her now at on Facebook and Instagram. Same thing at Rin Rin Music Official. R I N R A N Music Official. On Twitter, though, it's a little bit different. Rin Rin Music A U S. And her debut, <laughs> debut with Alice Cooper. Just that. Just a little. Yeah, no big deal. Debut. Uh, no, yeah, no big deal. We'll kick off on the 10th and 11th in June in Vanta and Kubio, Finland, open for Alice Cooper. 2022 Rock the City Festival, rock the city dot F I K U O P I O, Kubio, and rock the city dot F I Vanta, V A N T A A. Go check her out. Go to Bandcamp uh, and purchase her music. That's the best way to get the money to the artist. 
I think 80% goes to Renrin. So we want to we just send you there. Go to Bandcamp and pick up all our music. Thank you, Renrin, for joining us. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Thank you for being here. And Mike in Tokyo, thanks for getting up so early with us. You can go back to bed now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, communicate. Listen more and evolve. Everybody have a great week. We're clear now. We can very quickly get a, a, a drop, a voice drop from you. Radio drop. Radio drop. We'd like for you to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Rin Rin. Promote your album or whatever it is that you'd like to, but then tag it out with the last line would be, and you're listening to the Jeremiah show. Can we get that from you? Rin Rin? Uh Yes. Wait. Yeah, something like, hi, hi, this is Rin Rin. Uh, check me out like, on tour. Al's hi, tour this is better. Rin Rin. Check okay. me out on Facebook and right. Spotify. I mean, there you check go. me out on my EP. Yeah, exactly. Look out for my new singles coming this year. Right. And then and you're, you're listening, listening to The Jeremiah Show. The Jeremiah Show. Okay. We have my mic. There you you go. might want to throw in there. And if you're that ex boyfriend, Hellfire is on the way. <laughs> 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 yeah, you really should put that after and you're listening to the Jeremiah show. All right, you ready? I'll count you down. Three, two, one. Hey guys, it's Rin Rin. Go check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and my music on Spotify. Look out for my new singles releasing this year. And you're listening to the Jeremiah show. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you Dude. so much. Thank you. you guys yeah. never asked me to make one of those drops. Yeah, you did. Remember, you, you did. called it the Mike Rogers show. And That's you, right. You totally threw off Jeremiah. I show. loved that. That was so <laughs> oh, fun. No. He, he changed the name of the show. That's right. Oh, I did. Sorry I think that. we should make another one where she says, hey, ex-boyfriend, I'm on stage with Alice Cooper. Uh, you blew it. I, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. How do you feel about doing that? <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> Unless you want to. <laughs> Unless you want to. I mean, I could be like, I'm the skater boy. You did yeah, ballet. There you go. Do it, do it. You want to <laughs> do another one? Do a fun one. You want to do another one? Do one any way you want. Okay. All right. I'll count you down. Three, two, one. Hey guys, I'm Rin Rin. Go check me out on Spotify, Instagram, and Facebook and look out for my new singles releasing this year. And to my ex-boyfriend who's listening to this, I'm fucking skater boy now. So yeah, goodbye. You'll see me on TV playing with Alice Cooper and you're listening to the Jeremiah Show. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, I, love that. I love that. That was great. <laughs> I'll make that a separate sound file so you can send it to him. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. We better get going here. Yeah, we got another one. We got another up. guest. Sorry so, to say goodbye. Rin Rin, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Good for work. Me. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye. See you Bye. guys. See you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Um, Okay, so he's in there, by the way. He is good. He's we better get to him. I don't hate to keep a rock star waiting. I uh, hear you. So let me, I need to find, are you, do you, are you stopping the videos in between or are these one long? No, no, no. I'm stopping the videos okay. in between. Okay. Let me stop this one now.